Hello and welcome to all of you to our uh, first webinar of this lockdown season. We are all in middle of a major crisis. No matter how much we talk about COVID-19, we really do not know how long this crisis is going to last. We are making plans. We are giving solutions to the clients. We are making plans for ourselves, for our business partners. But these are all uh, estimations and uh, possibilities. None of us knows exactly where are we heading. There's nothing definite about our plans right now. I feel there is one definite thing that we can do in these times is to stand up for each other. The need for solidarity. And uh, with me today is this esteemed panel, uh, the industry veterans who can explain uh, more about what exactly solidarity in these times can mean for each one of us, for the entire industry, for every stakeholder. And uh, although it's just a formality, but I'm going to introduce this panel, which I, I doubt needs any kind of introduction. With me uh, today is Mr. Sam Balsara, Chairman and MD Medicine World. Mr. Ashish Basin, CEO APAC and Chairman India Dan. Mr. Shashi Sinha, CEO IPG Media Brands, and Mr. Amir Jalil, Group CCO and Chairman Mullen Low Lintas Group. Welcome to each one of you. Thank you. To begin with, I uh, would want to start with uh, Mr. Balsara. I think he's the senior most of amongst every one of us. So what do you mean? I mean, how can we define solidarity at this time for the industry? And what are the measures that the industry can take to be together? Well, I think solidarity, um, to be honest, I don't think solidarity was top of my mind. But now that you've raised it and the discussion is on solidarity, I guess solidarity at a time like this means not trying to take advantage of any situation that may come your way to be completely fair and transparent in your dealings with your clients, with other agencies, and most important, with your employees. And I think we have been fortunate that I think as an advertising industry, by and large, I would say we are a reasonably unified lot. And I think if the lockdown continues, and by all accounts, it does look like, uh, you know, it's going to go beyond April 15th, uh, probably I'm sure under Ashish's leadership, we'll come together on the 3As of I platform and take some decisions on what we collectively can uh, can do, uh, you know, to ensure that we have lives and vocations and jobs are safe uh, once the industry gets back to normal. So that is what solidarity would mean for me. Shashi sir, would you want to talk about solidarity? So I time? think the immediate thing is uh, keeping our industry safe because uh, at this point in time, there is, uh, you know, and, and uh, I hope it doesn't happen to us, but it is coming close. So in various parts, so we are in it together. Uh, I think safety and happiness of our employees and our people, because as Mr. Basara said, uh, we are pretty united in this. But the fact is that if we were together, you know, ensuring the mental makeup of our people, of our employees, of our partners, of our vendors, you know, and of our clients. So I think that, that to me is the immediate need of the hour and to help each other because finally, uh, you know, we are in the media business, at least we, we feed off media. So we are closer to what is happening. There's small, small examples where we can do, you know, people in trouble or we can help them out. Uh, people, sick people, not able to reach. So. Uh, our own employees, the ecosystem, the family. So I think there are simple, simple things which could be done, which will, uh, you know, both physically and emotionally, which will raise the morale at this point in time. Ashish, sir. I think uh, Sam and Shashi have both covered it. Uh, one of the things I'm very proud of, and I, I say this not as Dan Head, but as member of the advertising fraternity, I happen to be at present the uh, 
president of three years of five, which a position which Sam and many more much more illustrious people than me have occupied before. That as an industry, we are actually uh, pretty much we show a lot of solidarity even in times which are not of crisis. Of course, in times of crisis, there is need to show even more. I think the first thing as leaders, according to me, is that we have to be real and authentic. Uh, we have to communicate a lot with our people, with our partners, and everybody. And everybody has to understand that this is an emergency situation, it's not business as usual. And therefore, it is going to impact a lot of people. Uh, it's going to cause difficulties to a lot of people, hopefully for a short period of time, and hopefully we'll all come out of it. But first of all, we have to be true. One of the ways we try to show solidarity is that there are a lot of issues which are pretty common to all agencies. So, for example, at times like these, liquidity are, is an issue. So we collectively then talk to our friends on, let's say, on the media owner's side and try to tell them the problems that we are having and work out with them how we can accommodate each other, keeping their problems also in mind and seeing how we get over it. Also, I feel at this time, if we can all come together, there's a very good initiative, uh, which actually Sundar has uh, started, Sundar Swami has uh, initiated, which we hope to take through three years of five with the help of senior people like Sam and Shashi guiding us is to actually write to the government what are some of the things that they can do at a time like this which can help all agencies and, uh, and on that bit. And of course, like uh, Shashi said, these are also going to be times where there's going to be a lot of anxiety to people working in the advertising industry. I mean, am I going to have my job? Is there going to be a, uh, uh, you know, how is this going to impact me? So there's a lot of anxiety. Here's a time we can all come together and communicate. And like I said, in this, we have to be real. Yes, there is going to be a problem. Yes, there are. This is not business as usual and business is going to have an impact. But if we all work together, we can find a way to spread the pain to make sure that particularly, you know, the lowest uh, end of the pyramid is better taken care of. And, and we tide over this difficult period and come out stronger uh, at the end of it. Amir, you uh, would want to add something to the to the meaning and definition of solidarity in these times i think uh, you know this event uh, is far beyond you know professionalism uh, it's a human at humanitarian sort of crisis right it's a huge crisis and i feel that uh, it's opened our you know minds and hearts and eyes a lot uh, you know it's exposed to us the fact that we are all sort of interdependent Right. Uh, it's not just about our industry. It's about uh, like it's about everything. Right. Marketing uh, has understood how interdependent it is on the littlest person. You know, the, the person at, at the factory. Uh, we have understood how much we are uh, dependent on our uh, production uh, people. These are professional examples. But you you know you know that if your uh, domestic health uh, had has gone for a wedding in the middle of this. I mean, you're, you're, you're finished. So it's, it's huge and it's human, this crisis. And this crisis has exposed interdependence. And I think it has converted a lot of people into better human beings. So as people, we are understanding each other better. I, as people, we are getting more empathy with each other. And I feel that what happens is that, you know, when, it, see, it's never happened before that the end, that world almost is having a shared history. Usually shared history is, you know, you, uh, in your company, you, you come together, people have been, you know, you've grown up with people in your college or in your school, you have shared history, right? And that shared history gives you a sort of bonding and coming close to each other. But now this history is being shared by the whole world. The whole world is experiencing those same exact problems all everywhere. So this shared history, both professionally and at a very human level, is going to join us all together. I think we are all going to become saints because you know we, we will get each other so much. We will understand each other so much. You know there there was there was uh, you know although uh, I agree that there has been. Uh, uh, there has been solidarity in the industry, but there's also been pettiness. There's also been bickering. There's also been many other things that have been happening, right? All of these things I feel will disappear. They'll just go away, you know, because, because now we are all in the same sort of lifeboat. 
and we have to take it you know to some kind of a show together so this i think is going to change hearts and minds of people both professionally and at a human level so that's my understanding so this this was jalil's creative that is why you should have one person from creative industry also talking about solidarity while we all looked at very practical aspects of it jalil has made it more human was, <laughs> so uh, i was going, not trying to be creative or anything it was just no no i mean i mean for us <laughs> it was uh, it was definitely an additional input so uh, i want to come back to uh, what you said that you want to uh, you you want the entire industry to go to government about some measures that they can take to help our business what kind of measures or what kind of help do you expect from government at this juncture under the guidance of all the senior people we are trying to collate that so i don't yet have a full answer but there are some obvious ones so for example government is a big advertiser itself right and there are lots and lots of dues at this moment liquidity is a big problem uh not not necessarily for my agency but there are many agencies who are pretty dependent upon government business or have a large amount of government business if there if government can just start clearing its own bills which are often not paid for uh forget months but sometimes even years i think that would help i don't think there's any agency in india because we are in this unique problem that the tds deducted particularly from media agencies tends to be disproportionate because Uh, you know our commissions tend to be 2 and 1/2% but the tds tends to be uh, relatively in a relative sense much much higher so there is there are always refunds that we need to get on income tax and those are sometimes stuck up for years we need that the industry needs that money at the moment to pay its salaries to pay rents to keep the thing going so there are some practical suggestions like these and as well as if you look around in the world uh, just yesterday or day before singapore had its second round of uh, uh second round of um, uh, you know reliefs that they gave and for example of course it's a small country and and a well off country and maybe it can afford to up to 4600 dollars salary for the month of april the government will give 75% relief if you don't remove the person or like a subsidy and for rest of the months they'll give 25% relief so we i don't expect that we'll be able to give what singapore government can give but i think over a period of time we need to put money back into the pockets of businesses so that businesses can continue to run so we will collate all these suggestions and we will put them forward to the government and i'm hopeful that some if not all of them they will be uh, open to them how soon are we likely to do that well we should do it pretty fast we are in the process of collating it and three of i should be able to collate it and hopefully within this week itself i would like to uh, send this off once uh, you know i have the guidance of people like Shashi and Sam and Sundar and all of them, all the senior people and our exec approves it. Then we'd like to collate it and send it off. Sam, I I want to come back to you and uh, ask you if you have this long-standing career. Have you ever seen a situation like this where the viewership is at its peak? Hmm? Everyone is consuming television, yet there are no or minimum advertisers or people are shying away from advertising. have you come across a situation like this ever in past no obviously not i mean this situation is uh, unprecedented as amir said uh, you know at no i think at no time in the history has the whole world been locked down the way we have been uh, of course i think the closest in recent memory that we came to was in 2008 during the lehman crisis but i would say india was a little more protected from it at that time again you know business took a hit advertising took a hit there was a negative growth in advertising for the first time after few years but there has never been a time like this ever again and i should think that what is going to be the most difficult task for both people at the agency end and the advertiser end is to kind of get the economy going again as to how do we get uh, you know it's also a little easy for us to suggest that you know those who are able to keep their brand equity up at a time like this 
are the most likely to sort of benefit when things normalize. But when companies don't have physical money to pay, I guess it's not easy for them to advertise. So I guess we need to put our heads together to see once the lockdown is lifted, whenever it is lifted, it is now becoming reasonably sure that it won't be lifted on April 15th. Whenever it is lifted, how do we sort of help in getting advertising rolling again? Because I would, I would uh, suspect that when industry is just coming out of a terrible cash crunch, you know, it will be difficult for boards to take a decision that, okay, next quarter, let us spend this on advertising. So I think we, we need to put our heads together to come up with practical ideas that would make it easy for industry to revert back to normal as fast as possible and probably within a quarter. I, I would not, I read a view, I think, on your uh, uh, E4M, somebody saying that industry is going to be back with a vengeance when the lockout is lifted. I think it that is, in my view, is not going to be likely. I think, uh, you know, it'll be, it'll have to be, unfortunately, a slow start. And we'll have to put our heads together to see how we can accelerate that. Shashi, we want to add to that. I mean, what are these practical solutions that you can give to your clients right now? Can you hear me, Shashi sir? Yeah, me? Yeah, yeah. I asked you what are the, like Sam said, we have to give practical solutions to our so clients. I what think are these? I think it's premature to get into solutioning mode because just now, as uh, Mr. Balsara said, we don't know how long it's going to last and the extent of the damage. I think what he was politely trying to say that people are saying it will be a quick recovery. I think what was implied in that is, uh, and I tend to subscribe to what he's saying that it will be slow. It's not going to be easy and it'll take time, you know. So all this is nice to say we shaped and you shaped on the recovery, but it's going to be slightly long. And I think it's very premature to put out uh, ideas, but I think, you know, it will look very unsurmountable. You have to break them up, go client by client and break them up into small manageable parts. So each client has some strong markets, weak markets, strong customers, you know, depending on the product category. So without generalizing, I think a little bit of micro uh, discussion with clients have to happen uh, and then, but that is, it's a bit perhaps, uh, how to speak. Nazia, perhaps I can come in with a question for Shashi. Yeah, please, I've, been, I've been noticing uh, that Amul has been particularly active, I yeah. think, in recent weeks. So maybe, Shashi, you could share with us your views on how this came about, because I, I see Amul as a conservative advertiser, and as the client is fond of saying, he spends less than 1% on advertising. And I should think his products are in short supply and yet Amul is advertising. So how did it come about? Maybe he could share with your viewers and all of us the reasoning for that. Sam, it's, uh, uh, I think my, my interpretation of this is it's layered and multi-level. So while uh, you're right, supplies have been uh, you know, limited like all manufacturers, but probably Amul is a lot more uh, is a lot more, you know, larger infrastructure. They penetrate and there are multiple production centers all over the country, especially for milk. So, uh, it's probably so chances are it's not as, it's, it's the chances are it's not as dry as uh, a lot of other CPGs, you know. Uh, they are doing, like milk particularly, milk is the backbone. They are going with that all the way. So, firstly, Amul may be in a unique position because of the infrastructure that they are uh, delivering a lot more. Secondly, I think uh, Mr. Sodhi, a lot of credit goes to him. 
you know, what you spoke about band building earlier. So while there's immediate demand, but there's also moments of happiness, small moments of joy. So if you see the communication, a lot of it is around Marki Mamta, you know, which is the small moments of joy in a time like this, we're depressing all around. At least you're seeing even the news channels, if I may say so, are very morbid and all kind of stuff coming out, uh, not only related to the virus, also outside. So I think there is a possibility which uh, Sudhi, if you know him, personally believes in, I will believe in that ethos. And the third thing, which probably what you are seeing, is because there's no one else advertising at this point in time, the channels are probably overdoing it, you know, with the bonus saying and the leverage they're getting. So that is, I think, a uh, hidden benefit which has happened. That, you know, probably if the bonusing was X, now the bonusing is Y, which is why the visibility is a lot more. And also the clutter is less. So that is the spin-off which is happening. But I think the larger point is that the positivity they're trying to create all around this, you know, which is what they believe in. And I think that's a great strategy to have. Hopefully it will have a long-term impact. We're going to measure what happens maybe three months down the line in terms of bandwidth scores and other things. Actually, one of the things we should do as an industry is to watch, uh, you know, I've actually lived with this slightly longer than most people in India because of my APAC role, because China was the first country that went into this. So we've been, some or the other of our offices have been in lockdown since uh, before Chinese New Year, which is from January itself. Uh, uh, the irony is that today in all of APAC, the only offices that are working are in China. So Shanghai and Beijing have opened up and Wuhan, we have an office in Wuhan that is also uh, opened up, uh, partially opened up from uh, this week itself. Uh, so we, we live with this uh, a little longer. The phase that happens is that um, everything just goes downhill, downhill, downhill till it reaches a very sort of low level till the lockdowns, etc. lift. At least that's what happened in China. And we should study that very carefully. It's also happening in South Korea because it's following a pattern. So if you look at Italy, Italy is about a month ahead of China. Whatever is happening in China, including the plateauing, etc., is happening in Italy a month later. Perhaps US is another month ahead of Italy, etc. So it then goes down. Then it comes to a level where slowly business starts coming back, starts getting uh, some confidence. And the brands that start advertising first are the ones whose distribution opens up first because uh, it's not as if even when whenever the lockdown is lifted, like Sam said, it's unlikely it'll be lifted on 15th of April. But even if let's say 30th April or whenever it's lifted, it's not as if there will be a switch on and everything will be back to normal. In <laughs> because productions have to start, labor has gone to the ground, they have to come back. Uh, it, it, it's it's definitely the next two quarters are going to be painful. So some product categories start advertising first. We should study that and start going to those kind of clients first, whichever ones who are opening up first and say that, look, here is a chance where you are relatively better off, media is cheap, you can start getting back. Also because digital consumption is uh, continues to be more even after this is there, there are opportunities for performance marketing which can help you drive sales because the first thing the client needs at a time like this actually is liquidity. If he doesn't have liquidity, his own business cannot run. So uh, I know we are brand builders and storytellers and that's our key uh, job. But at a time like this, in a moment of crisis, our job has to be to help him clear his stocks and get sales going so that he has money, so that his business can start you know, getting normalized. So I think there are some learnings we can get for markets which have suffered this maybe a month or two or three before us. Mr. Jalil, uh... Most of the bigger campaigns have, are on hold right now. But still you have clients who are coming up with a lot of uh, COVID-related ads. What kind of communication are marketers looking at right now? I think... Uh, what are you suggesting to them? See, I think uh, all of us, uh, whether we, uh, whether marketers or brand builders of any kind, we are trying to keep a connection on with our audience. Uh, times, the time is very, very sort of scary. There's a lot of fear among people. At the same time, people are discovering very, very different parts of, uh, uh, of life in many different ways. I think uh, what we are suggesting to people is and what we should, as an industry, also take on a role, which has been our traditional role in that. See, whether it's a crisis or whether it's not a crisis, our greatest tool that we employ is creativity. And if you ask me, you know, I mean, everybody is in the crisis at the same time now. 
but uh, in my experience in a company that, you know as big as lintas usually what happens is one client or one brand is always under crisis some crisis is happening somewhere the difference that uh, that we, we are seeing now is that everybody is under crisis at the same time you know so we are we are trying to think that we know best we understand how to keep connections with people and we know how to solve problems with creativity so we have been doing and we have been advising our you know our uh, brands and our clients like this and we are also uh, you know planning a little ahead because uh, while uh, while this crisis was coming on we were planning for the crisis when the crisis hit us you know both as uh, as a government as a country and as marketers and as uh, an uh, advertising or a brand building agency we were thinking a little ahead we are now thinking ahead for you know when the lockdown will when we will be out of the lockdown so i think it's our it's our dharma to always think ahead what is going to happen how people are going to react and how to solve all that with creativity uh there is one more important point that i want to make because of uh, you know the you know the illustrious sort of panel that we have here and it's a very different point uh, from you know what the topic of your conversation is see i think uh, this this situation that we are in uh, we have some very very, very uh you know illustrious uh, leaders of in media here so i want to make a point about media actually i think we are in a situation where media needs restoration you know really speaking uh there is so much uh you know people are not uh people are not finding media uh especially news media to be uh dependable there's a there's a kind of uh, there's a kind of uh, of you know like a kind of fear that is 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 me, what media reporting is it right are they aligned are they all you know uh, speaking the truth somebody made a point just a little bit uh, in the beginning of this webinar and that point was about authenticity at this time you know i think uh, because we are in the center of this industry and shashi you are there sam is there I, you know ashish all of you all our voices are very important because you know we are connectors to media i think we should make a representation uh, to media because i have never seen actually and this crisis uh, has brought this uh, uh, to the fore i have never seen media looked on with uh, you know this much of uh, looked down this much upon you know every person from every uh, part of society today has something about uh, uh, something to say about media and we are you know uh, it's been on are, for quite some time i yeah. i i see little connection with covid 19 that's been on for a while no, now but, but, and it has but, just but, but gone to another level i mean yeah. of course with the increase of crisis it has increased further uh, we are live on facebook right now and i am getting questions for all of you uh we are left with only half an hour sorry uh, amir i uh, had to cut you uh, i want to finish all the questions uh we the first question uh, has been asked by some anonymous attendee uh, he's he wants to ask sam will it hamper the industry in long run well depends what is long run in the long run we are all dead but i yes of course i think uh, the impact of it is going to be there uh, in the long run if long run is meant to be one year i think uh, we'll definitely be impacted for the financial year 2021 i think there is going to be a serious setback uh, i wouldn't go so much as to say it would impact the next year hopefully we we'll get back to normal if if the lockout is lifted say one month from now uh, then i should hope i would say i should hope that by the festive season which is just by say by dasara i think we should get back to our normal self 
but it does mean that more than half year half the year has got wasted shashi sir why when do you think this i will not hazard a guess so uh, uh, for well one way like ashish is saying we also tracking markets and how they behaving in terms of the epidemic uh, and also uh, in terms of the recovery of the business which is happening but Uh, you know, as Abhi said, we don't know what's happening in the country just now. We don't know what the numbers are. We don't know what will pan out. So I would be uh, and uh, please also remember that just now US is affected, and uh, in a way the US economy uh, reflects global economy. So you know, so I would at this point in time. I mean, I'm hoping and praying what Sam Singh is right. Uh, I would also desire that you know by Diwali we are back in action. but it's very difficult to predict i would not put my you know one year my mouth is i just lie low at this point in time yeah yeah mr dilly i was thinking and this is only a theory uh, i think we uh, because of like the population that we have which is a much younger population uh i don't know but it could be possible that because we have a younger population and we have more numbers of that kind of population of course they can be quite mad they can you know younger people can you know uh, do all sort of uh, strange things but in this kind of a crisis coming out of a crisis i think younger people will be raring to go and that says you know I, that that puts our country i feel in a better position than many other countries especially you know uh, on on the european side and things like that so i feel very good and positive uh, that uh, out coming out of the crisis at least you know because of the population that we have we probably will do better the next question is for you only what form of advertising strategy would you suggest during these times vanilla advertising or building upon the connect through a series of engagement activities ah uh, See, we 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 it depends on the industry, depends on the category. Uh, we there is no blanket uh, solution to anybody. Uh, we are uh, we are working with people where they are absolutely behaving. Certain categories who are absolutely behaving as if there is no crisis. Everything is going normal. All their normal plans are on exactly as before, right? so they continue to do their their brand building when the sort of lockdown gets over all of these things that they are planning for will get produced and life will become very very normal there are certain other brands and certain certain categories who are completely focused on the here and now so to those guys we are helping them figure out how they should behave as brands and as you know uh, sometimes even as uh, corporates so we are advising uh, on all sort of fronts in different manners uh, so that's my that's my answer there's some mr pawan prakash who has said hi ashish and then he has disappeared i just thought i'll tell you that <laughs> ashish used to say hi to pawan as well <laughs> <laughs> and uh, no 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 he has come up with this question good point on categories uh, that would be first active post the lockdown which are the product categories that you would see getting active first and the big players like automobile handsets could take what kind of timeline to come back into business look so uh, somewhat similar to what sam and shashi said my my thinking is on similar lines uh, unlike shashi i am willing to put some some money where my mouth is you know that's the beauty of shashi never puts his money where his mouth is but uh, uh, i i think definitely this quarter of the calendar year is definitely going to be slow i mean that's that's a no brainer uh, on that there is one very important element in the indian economy which we always miss out and that is the monsoon because our rural economy is still unfortunately even 70 plus years after independence very very dependent upon the monsoon and if we uh, at the moment what is happening consumption has come to near zero except for essentials we need the consumption to start for industry to start if the monsoon is good if the rural spending happens then you will see that the consumption starts and then from diwali onwards like sam and shashi both said you can hope for an upswing to start right uh, we'll be lucky if we end this year with a 0% growth we'll probably end this year with a negative growth from way uh, this calendar year the way things look now because you know it's it's good to be optimistic uh, but at the same time 
um, you've got to plan for the worst and hope for the best. At the same time, you have to be realistic. Make sure that your teams get a realistic message because otherwise, you'll end up spending more resources than you should and not planning for the right bid. Now, if this were to follow logic, then I think the FMCGs will be the first to come back in full swing because that's where consumption will will obviously happen. The industries which are more service oriented will come back faster, food industries, etc. E-commerce has picked up very fast in China. In fact, e-commerce in many cases is doing better than what it was doing before because a lot of the physical stores opened later. The e-commerce deliveries started earlier. So that starts picking up. Entertainment, uh, even though cinema halls don't open, but you know, uh, OTTs, televisions, they, uh, channels, etc. They start advertising a lot. The heavier industries like infrastructure or even automobiles, etc., which need a lot more time to get their production going and their distributors going, etc., tend to be coming in a little later in the market. So, so far, what we are seeing is that uh, service industries, quick touch, uh, light manufacturing industries, consumable uh, FMCG kind of goods, they are the ones which are bouncing, off first, uh, bouncing back first. Uh, the somebody called Mr. Pankaj Bilwari had asked the same question from Shashi sir. Which category of advertisers will be most impacted and which will be least impacted and bounce back fast after lockdown opens? You want to answer that Shashi sir? So it's, a, it's, it's I think it's very close to what Ashish said. So yeah. it is, I mean, my view is exactly that. Okay. Well, I would say the luxury goods segment is uh, going to take a bit of a long time so if i was a luxury car maker if i was selling luxury fashion goods i think uh, they would be a little more slower to recover also i think in fmcg uh, maybe the top end of the premium goods might take a little more time uh, than the you know the regular segments Next question is from somebody, I don't know, he has not revealed his name, he is from, he works for either of you. He wants to know how secure is his job. <laughs> oh, it's sure. about job security has been a concern. How are you motivating your employees? Who are you asking this to? He has, all of you, because this person <laughs> has not revealed his name. So he's working for any one of you, I don't know who. So I, I, we can start with Ashish sir. How are you ensuring this job security? Look, at the moment, uh, I am just telling all my colleagues that there is going to be pain. All of us are going to feel the pain, whether you're senior, whether you're junior, whether it's a company, whether it's an individual, an event as catastrophic as this. It's a once in a lifetime, once in many generations event. This is the kind of stuff your father or grandfather told you stories about. You know, in partition, mein ye hua tha, hum jaan bacha ke bhaage the, etc. That food wasn't available, that kind of stuff. We haven't, last two generations haven't even experienced it. So when a when an event of this magnitude happens, there is going to be pain. And I think it is important for leaders to be honest and tell their people that it's going to be there. I think all responsible leaders will obviously try to minimize loss of jobs as much as possible. Uh, almost every company, I can't imagine any, certainly my company has, has started cutting down on any expense that you can defray, uh, postpone your postponing. Obviously, bonuses, increments, etc., will get impacted. Hiring that you may have presumed that you would do will get postponed. The last thing you <laughs> want to do is to it's it's better to cut salaries somewhere or you know uh, have people voluntarily cut salaries than cut jobs. Etc. So it's going to be kind of a uh, it depends on how bad it gets. It's got to be kind of a graded uh, response, I guess, depending upon how long this lasts. But uh, in a moment like this, everybody will get impacted. Hopefully, leadership will make that the impact is as the pain is as minimized as possible, but there will be pain uh, in that sense. But you know, it's not all doom and gloom. There is going to be light at the end of this tunnel. Uh, I've lived through four financial crises, albeit none as uh, as uh, global as this or as big as this. And I'm sure Sam and Shashi probably even more uh, than that. Our industry is very resilient. India as a country in the midterm and long term is going to do well. Like Amir said, they, we have young population, very well um, equipped to handle the future. So there will be light at the end of this tunnel, but in the short term, there will be pain. So uh, the honest answer, which I would give, and it doesn't matter whether it's from my company or from any other company, I, I think all leaders would probably say that, that there will be some amount of pain. We will, obviously, everybody will uh, try to minimize as much as there is, but 
nobody is going to go unscathed with it but hopefully it will be temporary and it will be short lived anyone else would want to add to that shashi sir i just want to add to what ashish said you see uh, see this time it's it's uh, it's a global pandemic it's happening all over and uh, also they done advertising 70 to 80% of advertising is controlled by global companies and global companies will work in a particular manner so you know they obviously the, the american system or the european system is because there is social security so they move in a particular way the psyche is one way to job cuts i think as ashish correctly said they will be pain but uh, i'm sure all the leaders in the industry and especially on this panel will be will be you know will be sympathetic to it they will take cultural sensitivities in uh, in uh, mind you know asian cultures behave differently and as a result will minimize the pain to whatever extent possible there are many ways of minimizing the pain you know probably seniors will take a bigger hit than the youngsters or whatever so there are many ways of doing it but uh, yes i think the the fact is that this is a mature industry and our people should be aware that whatever pain comes will be handled with uh, maturity Sam or uh, Amir, would you want to add anything to that? No, I would say, uh, well, depending on what is the announcement on April 14th, uh, depending on the lockdown, I would say companies would be well advised to kind of work out their own plans based on their own cash reserves as to how much money they have and how long will it last and take some appropriate action so that that money can last longer than for a short period of time i think uh, you know rather than just go on as if life is normal and then suddenly discover that oh you've run out of money obviously it's better to take some precautions uh, you know and see that you know how you could lengthen your staying power at a time like this and that would i think be in the interest of uh, everybody in the industry amit you have a view i uh, see the thing is that we all know that our industry is built completely of people there is nothing else in our industry now that's a good thing and a bad thing at, at such a time a good thing because uh all of our creativity our talent everything is dependent on people if all of that is depending on people obviously we need people right so people build a company uh, like in our industry at the same time because the cost is the highest from people in our industry we have to consider you know at a at a time in, in the time of a crisis uh how to sort of control that cost at least in the long term right and i think uh you know all of us uh like would like to pledge you know that we will protect our people as much as possible because our money our business our revenues everything depends on people but i think long term this crisis is going to change the industry and actually it's not just, it's not the crisis which is going to change but it's the it's the it's the fact that we went under lockdown that is going to change the industry i think we have discovered completely new ways of working uh we are you know uh, we have discovered that we don't need that many the, uh, there are a lot of questions much. particularly about job security ha uh, i have out of some 24 questions i've received most are about job security so that's bound to, that's bound to happen you know everybody is worried about uh, about their jobs but uh, see impact is definitely going to be there it's too big a crisis for no impact to be there but that depend now it also depends on the culture of your company right what kind of culture you have what uh, particular uh, you know challenges your company is facing but large companies company with uh, companies with culture will try to protect their employees as much as possible so that's the short answer to all those questions mr arvind kumar has a specific question to ashish sir consumption is near zero because there are no outlets for people to buy even e-commerce is unable to deliver so there is a danger of a run on the stores when the lockdown is lifted how will brands handle this i think first of all before brands uh, you know when when you're in a 
medical and a humanitarian crisis human nothing is more important than human life right so first of all more than how brands will handle it from a safety point of view how will the government handle it is uh, probably a bigger challenge and that's one of the reasons why they are uh, reluctant to lift the lock, lockdown because so far people haven't uh, shown that they are exactly very responsible when things are lifted right suddenly every you keep talking about social distancing and then you see a big crowd gathering at at, at places uh, so first of all the mechanism of opening up will need to be managed i feel that they will uh, looking at other countries and they've probably divided into let's say a red green and amber kind of a zone so green zones where there been not too many infections or 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 are relatively safer they might open up a little earlier they may still do alternate day opening for shops etc they may stagger the hours just to make sure that there is not enough of a crowd gathering i feel that they will first open the more essential stores uh, uh, first more and more then they will open you know let's say mobile services those kind of stores but things like malls cinemas uh, multiplexes etc will probably open after a long time it'll be kind of a staggered opening in that sense when that happens equally on the production side companies you know their their whole cycle is broken uh, somebody whose is factory is shut it's not a switch you can't switch it on and then say from tomorrow production is back to normal or transportation is back to normal uh, etc for them to ramp up and come back to where they were will also take a lot of time also at times like these you got to make sure that profiteering doesn't happen because there will be natural shortages there's a pent up demand and people are going to come in and like the person asking the question is saying there may be a run on certain type of uh, products etc so it's going to be a pretty complicated way uh, the op- managing the opening will almost be as important as managing the lockdown because if that doesn't happen forget uh, one is the uh, medical part of it but even the economy can go into turmoil and they can be chaos if that isn't managed well but i think the governments are preparing for it state governments particularly are preparing for it and i think they will do it in a phased kind of a manner maybe zone wise market wise day wise to stagger it out and companies some of the companies incidentally have already more than before have already started opening up for supplies because see you might say Uh, a particular company is an fmcg company and that's allowed because it's a essential item but he'll run out of bottles after some time he may not be manufacturing his bottles so you need the glass manufacturer also to be open for the essential item to to be flowing and so on and so forth so more and more slowly in the chain will start getting opened up but it'll happen in phases uh next question is from sadran market uh, it's by my colleague sneha the sadran markets are very big on retail however in the past 2 years sadran markets have been hit for instance kerala was hit first by nim and then also by floods this year the tamil new year will be a washout what is your take on regional brands and regional sadran advertising please uh sam shashi who ashish sir i mean any one of you can pick up this question my understanding is that regional brands in fact will be a little more resilient i mean the fact that they are regional is that they in my view they they have a smaller pocket of influence but the intensity of their relationship with their customers is a little stronger also i don't know if i'm right in saying but many regional brands will still be sort of private concerns and these private concerns are generally more conservatively managed uh so i mean unless somebody has been very rash or has made a very big acquisition in the recent past i would think if they are in the broadly in the fmcg or food space uh they should be a little more resilient if not as resilient as a national fmcg or food brand now this question is to uh, shashi sir and ashish sir i mean any one of you can answer this in fact all four of you should answer this is it good to cut 25% salary or to cut 25% workforce what is more efficient 25% Whether one should cut twenty-five percent salary 
or cut 25% workforce? What is more efficient? So if you ask me personally, uh, you know, uh, from a humanitarian point of view, it is better to cut salary than to cut jobs. You know, uh, because at this point in time, uh, uh, jobs are difficult to find, number one. Number two, it's not like America, you, you know, psychologically it is a huge trauma. So losing a job has multiple downsides. One is finding a job in this time. Secondly, psychologically you will be upset. And thirdly, you know, the stigma attached with that. Uh, so I think if I was to, fo if this is a forcing question, as I say in bed, it's a forcing bed that you're asking. It is better to uh, do a salary reduction rather than put someone on the road. You know? Anyone else? Sorry. Do you agree, Ashish? Yes, I agree with you. Julia? I mean, try to uh, reduce it from 25. <laughs> Let, let's add. start with five if we have to. I No, I would of course uh, fully agree that I think on humanitarian grounds, I think uh, the cut would be better than, uh, you know, sacking uh, people. Kunal Kishore has asked an interesting question. I, I would also add one more thing. Uh, that I think if at all one does need to impose a cut, then I think it has to be a graded cut and the people at the top have to take a higher percentage cut than the people at the bottom. I think that would be fair. And that is what most companies are doing right now, right? Mostly it's, it's, it's in the uh, decreasing order only. So uh, Mr. Kishore wants to know, Will there be a different recovery phase for different medias like print, television, etc. after lockdown? So which sector will recover faster amongst, we can add digital also to it. So let's say we have print, TV, outdoor and digital, which will recover faster? In, are, are you asking me? Oh. Any one of you, you can, you can start. Uh, well, I, I, I feel that uh, digital will be faster and in digital performance media will be the fastest because like I said earlier, people will want sales, they'll want performance, they'll want quick, quick turnaround. Uh, I think a new medium will emerge much stronger out of this, which will be mobile gaming because everybody's sitting here for one month. You can see the traffic on mobile gaming in India now starting to reach levels which make it interesting. Uh, as far as other media are concerned, as advertising comes back, I think all, all media will benefit. Uh, certainly television will. A medium like print has been under pressure anyway, even before uh, this COVID uh, scenario uh, hit us. So obviously, even if you look at the history, historical thing, the growth at print will be relatively much slower than the others. So in my view, it will be that. The medium which will bounce back uh, uh, very strong is also going to be outdoor because people have been indoors for long Still enough exactly. and all of a sudden when you know people are, and, and there will be a lot of vacant sites and vacant positions as soon as this opens there will be a lot of people who will be moving outdoors once travel starts airports all, all those kind of things will start picking up also pretty fast. Shashi sir you want to add? Yep, fully the same. I'd only, only add that you know I care for my friends in print because print has a problem of uh, it's not been growing from an advertising point of view and also they have costs because there's you know they finally print so they'll be in this dilemma of how to reduce the uh, footprint in terms of circulation or the size of the paper at the same time attract advertising so i'd be very i mean that's where uh, you know prudence and Mr. Basara mentioned will come in very useful. so i'd be very very uh, very for my print friends and how they how they shape up in the next six months sam you agree or you have a different view yeah well I would, uh, and I think we said this in our last pitch report also, I think the important thing for print to do is to safeguard the brand equity that they possess in their title. And may some of these titles are half a century or century old. So I think the best thing for them is possibly is to, you know, view themselves as sources of news and you know look look upon a combined digital plus print medium so for for example for the last few days i have been reading my papers you know on, on. in the in the newspaper format but on digital 
so hopefully you know maybe this is opening a new avenue to them uh, I, i don't like doing that by the way i must mention so if a, if a print copy was available i think i would buy it probably the answer to to their problem would be that they would have to you know multiply their subscription rate uh you know so that those who can afford the luxury of a hard copy in their hands would have to pay substantially for it the others will read it digitally uh, but somehow their title will survive so do you all agree that print will will be the last to recover from the crisis digital no. will be the no. no outdoor you said no the last will actually be cinema because uh, mm-hmm. cinema going is a habit which is actually picking up pretty well in india uh, you know uh, because single screens were con- converted to multiplexes it was like a family outing and it, it was more than just watching the movie it was more like a family outing kind of thing but now with the all these you know being in a closed a closed space first of all the government itself will probably may not allow cinema for for even a longer period of time cinema houses mm-hmm. to open but even when it does there will be a hesitation on people to go into closed ac locked environments uh, for some time eventually it all normalizes but you know it will be at the back of people's minds so i think cinema will be probably the last medium to recover i mean next question is uh, for you in this testing time when no one is spending any money on marketing what are the ways to keep make your brand alive please be specific for news content brand currently there is so much content how to be different so can you can you just repeat with that uh, about the news content part? what are the ways to keep your brand alive he specifically specifically wants to understand it from the perspective of news content brand so that means the publisher yeah ah. the television right. news channel how to be different when you are a news content brand it's ah. not written sentences you just written dash dash mm-hmm. see um i think uh, the best brands will look at every crisis like an opportunity this particular uh, uh crisis is actually much more uh, like i said uh, humanitarian uh, in the beginning so therefore there is a lot of uh, there are a lot of questions here you know do you appear to be more commercial do you appear to be opportunistic during this time or do you sort of uh, go out there and behave uh, like how a brand should and sell yourself as much as you can do you take advantage so there are multiple sort of uh, questions both in consumers uh, heads how they take each brand and in terms of uh, in the marketers heads like that so it's going to be uh, it's going to be a time where you play it very very delicate i feel you have uh, wh- whatever you have to say you have to manage your tonality beautifully you have to see to it that you give respect not just to the person that you are talking to but you give respect to the situation under which everybody is this how everybody is is reacting and especially in a time where brands have now become two way there is no one way brand available there is one brand that you think is in your head and there is you know like a million brands that that's there in other people's heads so it's all a collection of uh, memory or a, a collection of understanding in people's head about brand especially under this situation you have to play it very very delicate where news brands are concerned uh, i think uh, respectability uh, authenticity uh, being being true uh, to the kind of work the kind of brand that you are the kind of reporting that you want to do all of that is much more important than brand building if you express at this time uh you know uh, through an ad what kind of brand you are 
it's likely to have less impact than the kind of work, the kind of news, the kind of actual reporting that you put out, right? It's time to behave in a certain way and, and not project in a certain way. So I would advise every news brand to actually walk the talk and, you know, less uh, and uh, pay less attention to the talk. I am getting a lot of questions. I don't know how many would you be interested in answering. Uh, maybe we can take two more questions and depending on how much time you guys have. Uh, there is this one person I wanted to take this question. It is to Ashish. There are a lot of SME agencies who are concerned that INS and IBF have not announced any relaxation on payment rules in these difficult times. Is the AAA taking it up with INS and IBF? Mr. Arvind Kumar wants to know. I don't know why all the difficult questions you sent to me. and to, uh, <laughs> It's written, Mr. Ashish. Uh, well, uh, so look, as far as the Advertising Agencies Association of India is concerned, we represent our members, right? So if the SMEs are uh, members of the if, if, and, and members of 3 SFI are large agencies, mid-sized agencies and small agencies. So if those agencies are members of uh, 3 years of I, then obviously as we talk on behalf of our members, we would be talking on their behalf as well. I can confirm to you that we are having very productive conversations both with IBF and with INS. Uh, everybody understands that these are uh, very unique circumstances, but that does not mean it's a blank check for people to um, uh, you know, use it as an excuse to delay payments, etc., etc. Wherever there is a genuine case, we are taking it up, and I have to conf uh, I'm, and I'm pleased to say that we are getting um, uh, a very sympathetic response from all our media, not just uh, INS, IBF, but also all our media partners in that because everybody understands what the situation is. But it's very important in these cases to make sure that you're still making all the efforts, getting in the money as much as fast as you can, and clearing off your use as quickly as you possibly can. This is not a license for you to delay your payments. So there's no blanket uh, sort of uh, carte blanche uh, extension or something. But wherever there is a genuine case, and we have taken it up on behalf of our members, uh, I have to say the response has been uh, very supportive from all our, partner, all our partner associations. Next question is to all of you. Do you see any advertising categories not coming back for at least 18 months. Real estate. Real estate. I don't well, think. Airlines, you know, airlines also, they yeah. don't spend much, but airlines, I think, will take a long time to recover. Yeah. I, I worry for them. I'm very scared for them. In fact, you know, there are some seminal uh, events that happen in your life after which life is never the same again. Uh, and uh, Shashi had mentioned uh, airlines. If you remember in the US before 9-11, you could almost, in Florida, I remember I almost walked it. You just check in your bag at the curb and you could literally almost walk it into your plane. It was that easy. And after 9-11, you know the amount of security. Travel changed forever, right? And what Shashi is saying is absolutely right. The same may happen to airlines. It might just change forever. People may not travel. Uh, a guy like me who was absolutely never, I've never worked from home even one day in my life, even one hour in my life. Uh, ever, ever, until this happened. Today, even I'm convinced that there is a lot that you can do and have some free time on your hand through work from home. So the way we used to just pick up our bag and travel to countries, uh, you know, in, 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 without batting an eyelid uh, in, in two or three months, I think that might actually just change forever. So Shashi is right. Airlines could possibly be one of those. But I think real estate also, as far as India is concerned, will take a long time. Business travel for sure is going to take a big, big, big hit. And it's not just going to be because of, uh, you know, what is happening to airlines, but it's, it's because of a realization that, you know, all of us uh, are having. Yes, absolutely. Without traveling. Yes. Yes. Who wants to be stuck in any kind of traffic, whether it is on the road or whether it's in an immigration queue or anywhere else for that matter. In long term, it will be good for our environment. No traffic will reduce, air traffic will absolutely. reduce. Yeah. So this, there's this question the environment about and economy. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I was saying in environment and economy are at cross purposes, unfortunately. But we'll have to figure that one out. This question is for Sam, although it's, it's more about advertising. 
but this person wants sam to answer this are campaigns around corona virus creating value or clutter i think it has been addressed by and large i think uh, it is agreed that if any brand is trying to take advantage of the corona situation uh, you know uh, then it would not get any positive mileage from such advertising however on the other hand you know if they are providing a genuine service uh, to the consumer then i think it would be appreciated so that's that's how i would uh, put it on the other hand let's say i was delighted to see uh, two days ago i hope i'm not spilling the beans that my client asian paints has ready the campaign on you know life at home and the happy moments that families are spending in different homes i think such uh, such campaigns uh, would actually be widely appreciated young entrepreneur who again wants to ask mr ashish basin do you think this is the right time to work on business development in the mindset of people clients suitable for it i haven't understood the question nothing. even i didn't understand so i'll go to another question <laughs> it's only written that much so satish pr wants to know do you think consumers media consumption habit change as the lockdown prolongs weaning more towards tv and digital yeah, do you think basically do you think there will be a habit change in consumption patterns after this well certainly in the short term yes because at the moment you're not getting your newspapers in many places like i'm not getting my newspaper much like how sam said so and definitely data also shows that television and uh, digital consumption has gone up but that's because people are all sitting at home once uh, everybody starts going back to normal life and th and and things sort of uh, normalize um, i think more or less it will come back to where it was but perhaps uh, reading news digitally might become more of a habit than it was before they, you know they say if you do something for 21 days it becomes a habit certainly for 21 days we all be reading news digitally instead of by newspaper i can't imagine more than 21 days more than 21 days i can't imagine starting my day without a newspaper you know when a newspaper used to get late i would be roaming up and down my passage waiting for it to come it's such a habit it's such a habit forming thing but now when you know that it's not coming then you you learn to adjust without it right so uh, i think that that change might might happen and like sam said print uh, print owners have to now start thinking of digital and print as one unit perhaps in that sense of news but otherwise uh, once people start going back to work you won't have time sitting at home watching tv all the time for sure take this one second last question on auto category auto category is already going down for the past one year due to lockdown the sales have completely stopped now even after the lockdown is lifted i feel people are going to be hesitant to buy a vehicle in the next quarter how do brands approach this situation shashi sir you want to answer that so this is a uh, so it's a very obvious thing you know autos is now is uh, is uh, under pressure because of bs4 to bs6 also so i think it's a valid concern that auto is going to be under pressure but you know i have a slightly contrarian view and i can't put a time to it but over a period of time this whole uh, see auto has been affected by uh, you know these apps uh, ride sharing which is happening i think with social distancing will be a more long term phenomenon as ashish mentioned you know it's going to be slightly longer in terms of habit changes which are happening after the virus and a lot of people will may may consider going back to the fact that this an over mown vehicle is hygienic is clean and this ride sharing may become fitness so, so it may not be a dramatic shift but if i was an auto company if i position myself right i think there is hope it's not that suddenly uh, it may take 6 months one year but people will uh, when credit with auto finally is all on financing you know so when nbfc start financing uh, uh, auto purchase i think there is hope it's not going to be a doom just scenario for the reason which i mentioned i think auto uh, i think auto sec uh, you know sector is also passing through a very exciting phase actually there is a completely new kind of technology that is coming into the auto sector and both from the consumer side uh, i think there is a lot of excitement towards auto so i don't know whether immediately or not but i think the there is a there is an opportunity for the auto sector 
use this uh, forced sort of break to consider you know how they are going to come back uh, into people's consciousness because i feel the more exciting uh, you know automobiles that you put out uh, consumers will receive them with as much sort of uh, uh, acceptance and with uh, with open arms but uh, if you stay back and if you try uh, to go back to the old ways then i think that that will uh, suffer ashish sir you want to add look i think uh, i don't think it's going to revive very very fast in the sense that this is not a priority first of all production itself will take a long time to come back to normal because auto is a very big industry and uh, you can't just suddenly start production and hope things get back to normal so it will take a little bit of time but uh, just to end this discussion on a slightly more positive note i think the good thing about a market like india is that it is near infinite even now one of the reasons why we will we will do well in the medium term and in the long run even though we are just now very blinded by this immediate uh, crisis the reason is that we have a large population that is going to consume right and there there are about 100 to 200 million people you know the number was probably going to be 300 million but maybe even after this crisis maybe 200 million people in the next 3 years 4 years who are going to come out of the poverty line right and there is a huge country of 1.3 billion people uh, the number of automobiles that we make today versus our population is a fraction of what it what it should be so in the medium to long term it will do well but it's not one of those categories which will suddenly spurt back into normalcy because its lead times tend to be pretty big it's it's one of the uh, backbone infrastructural kind of uh, industries because steel depends upon that the nation's progress in many ways depends upon that so i'm i'm very confident that autos will do well in the long run of course short term there there are going to be problems i'll i'll uh, this is actually the second last question after this i'll just read one more question because i'm i'm really flooded with too many questions so this and this this gentleman has sent me four questions but i'm going to pick up only one so uh, sayed ahmed wants to know what would you suggest and i also wanted to uh, close uh, on this question what do you suggest for the time being i understand the marketing spends can pent up when things are back to normal but what should brands do during these times when the media consumption and consumer attention is at its peak i would want each one of you to answer this because this is also what we want to understand from you and a lot of brands want to know this sam you want to start hey what what i think is uh... what what i'm going to suggest may not be palatable but i would say brands have to somehow find ways of keeping themselves alive in the minds of consumers one way or the other i mean if it is through television digital influencer marketing whichever way i think a long absence would not be advisable i mean of course that's easier said than done so within the limitation of their limited resources they should find some ways of trying to keep their brands alive that would be my sincere advice to brands shashi sir so you know to add to what sam said and not because we are in advertising i genuinely believe that after the crisis is over when we come back there will be a lot more focus on brands which are trustworthy you know people will start looking at brands which are hygienic trustworthy and whom they can you know they feel are confident so and this is the time to build your trust trust is not built overnight so if you invest in building trust in which way way you can you know and uh, there can't be a better opportunity because of the way the situation is just now so as sam said it has to be in, a, in your within your means and within your limited way but look at the future that listen use this opportunity to build up trust and become more stronger whoever takes the lead in the category will gain others will lose out ashish first of all i would say that if you don't have the money then don't advertise it's better you don't advertise and then don't pay your bills than uh, in that sense so if you don't have the money just conserve it and just hang on just now because things will look better and that's the time when you when you should uh if your brand is not even distributed and is everything is is not there 
maybe it's not necessary for you to do it but if you can do it then like both sam and sachi said there's no time better than this because you'll remain that connect with the consumer will remain and at a relatively less price but if you are communicating at times like these you have to either be you have to be adding value to the consumer nobody is in the mind uh, you know is in the mind space of uh, getting just uh, being sold to at a time like this so it has to be something of utility to the consumer either you make an app which sort of tells them where's the nearest store you can get something or you uh, you know or you uh, or you entertain them maybe you give them content which is entertaining whatever you do in some form or the other advertising at this point should be adding value to the consumer and not just trying to sell something because at times like these that doesn't work the worst example of advertising i saw a print ad of a mattress which said that if you use this mattress uh, you won't get covid or something to that that effect uh, which is in a national daily newspaper i think those are uh, no consumer it'll only backfire for you and you're not only really wasting your time you're actually killing your brand by doing that amir you want to add to it um i don't know about advertising uh, but i think uh, such uh, an unprecedented uh, crisis is also bringing an uh, unprecedented opportunity so it's time actually for not it's not just about brands it's about uh, brand owners marketing uh, companies marketers all of us actually to think to be a little brave and and to you know move in a little bit courageous sort of fashion people who are who can uh, take on such a crisis and who can see the opportunity in their market in their category uh who can see that you know just a bit of uh change innovation something uh, uh that we do right now will impact uh consumer tomorrow this is the time to think like that it's the time to be brave it's the time to move and exploit you know the marketing opportunity that this is throwing up this is the last question i am not asking this mr balaji Srinivas Chari wants to know: Will the clients renegotiate agency remunerations now, as there is no much liquidity at their end? This question actually came first, but you decided to keep it uh, and no, say no, last. No, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, I don't. I would uh, want each one of you to answer that. Sam, would you want to answer that? <laughs> well, we hope not. <laughs> Nothing beyond that. well because no, I'll, you know, i'll give you also certainly salaries account for 50 to 60% uh, you know on our balance sheet uh, given that situation we 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 hope that clients would also take a reasonable stand so can i add yeah, to yeah. what sam said that you know our fees are commission a very very minuscule part of the total marketing outlay and i think uh, ashish has been saying this not only today but even otherwise even before think, this crisis yeah the critical he is saying you know he is saying something which is coming to he is been saying listen the collections are more important than that money is ma'am also for a media agency we earning 2.5% so 97.5% is more important so i think any mature client will understand that uh, it is better to get efficiency there on the 97.5% rather than worry about the 2.5% or what will be the fees sir ashish sir we uh, i think shashi and sam have both said the right things and 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 i hope that happens but um i'd be dishonest if, if i don't say this but i i do believe as it started it, in china market <laughs> <laughs> no i i i can't, i don't know but uh, i i i think in india yes clients will try to do a certain type of clients will try to do it there are certain types of clients who try to get you to do a lot of work put you on an annual retainer then try to stop your retainer after 2 3 months so there are all kinds of clients ultimately every agency gets the client they deserve and every client gets the agency they deserve so these kind of clients will eventually get that kind of service from an agency so uh, there will be clients who will have a short term view like that uh, but in the end you get what you pay for amir you want to add something to this i think we are working too much during this time and if anything i would like to you know raise uh, fees rather than uh, reduce so i would like to tell all uh, everybody out there that you know there's so much work happening at, at this time whether it's happening from home uh, or not doesn't matter uh, 
it's actually there is a huge amount of work now and huge amount of work later and you know clients and everybody else should understand that this much work that is going in uh, actually deserves a uh, better fee and one, one last thing sorry just before uh, because uh, again you know we started with solidarity yeah. uh, i just feel at this point in time in the industry uh, it's not just uh, you know the point is about uh, uh, the challenges that the industry will face it could be about you know about jobs it could be about uh, fee it could be about uh, infrastructure all of these things but i think uh, because you uh, because the, the the forum is about solidarity i think we have a lot of associations and different uh, sort of uh, agencies and bodies that are existing i think all of those bodies should get together so you know it's not just about what the theers of i will do i think it may be time for all the bodies in the industry to actually come together the act club the theers of i even marketing bodies and form like a like a more uh, uh, you know central sort of uh, body that can uh, talk about all the issues related to media related to marketing and related to advertising at one forum so if we can all get together as a result of this conversation then we'll all bless e forever we are trying to put uh, more panels uh, in place in coming weeks we'll we'll definitely consider your suggestion we are we're actually trying with some people who are not available so we wanted to start with the agencies no, first no this is not just about a discussion it's actually about having a serious cross yes yes absolutely a cross association a industry wide body actually you know and uh, we have the people here you know i think shashi uh can make things move at the ad club ashish and sam you guys can make things move at uh, three years of i and there are so many other associations that are there uh that marketing is a part of and media is a part of we must get together and actually do something that uh, all of us uh, can contribute to uh you know in an integrated sort of fashion i think that that's really very, the solidarity that's a very good suggestion and it will lead to solidarity and equally i would hope that agencies like lindas will also give more support and participate more actively in the associations so that we can strengthen them because when we all speak with one voice it carries a lot of weight so i do hope to see uh, amir taking a more active interest in three years amir or his colleagues taking a more active interest in three years of life we will we will this is a wicked spy lord as well sir this <laughs> <laughs> is any okay, any Nazia. anything else any one of you would want to add before we close it No, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ashish sir. Has really summed it up very well that when we all will be together, we'll be able to fight this uh, uh, better and with much ease. And hopefully, we all recover from this crisis as smoothly as possible. Thank you, each one of you, for joining us, and uh, we'll we'll keep coming back to you. I could only take eleven or twelve questions out of forty-one questions that. uh people from industry wanted to know maybe we will have another session some other time thank you each one of you for thank joining you, us thank, thank you. you bye bye thank you bye 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 ashish bye ashish bye amir bye ashish bye, bye. 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 bye.